Hi everyone, and welcome to how to create a podcast audio react animation using Adobe After Effects. I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist with over 10 years of experience. And in this course, we'll take you through step-by-step -step on how to create this really cool audio react spectrum video from scratch so that you can use them in your own podcast and video projects. Some of the topics that we'll cover will include how to create, prepare and compose the background image, how to create the different types of audio spectrum animations, including the digital style, analog lines, analog dots and the wave, and how to create camera angles to add variety and to make it look even more interesting. By the end of this course, you'll have a better understanding of these tools and how to create a podcast audio react animation from scratch using Adobe After Effects. So let's get started with the first lesson. So let's start things off by learning how to download and create a background for our audio visualizer animation. We'll be using these vintage scratch backgrounds that are available for you to download from Envato Elements. So make sure to check out the Envato Elements website. You can get unlimited downloads of design assets, templates, and fonts. That's millions of creative assets all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. Plus no lock-in contract means that you can cancel at any time. Subscribe now with the link in the description. To find a background just like the one we'll be using in the course, just go to the search bar at the top of the website here and we want to type in vintage scratch backgrounds like so. And we'll also want to change the search category here next to the search bar on the left. And we want to change this to graphics. So once you've done that, hit enter on the keyboard and you'll find a whole range of background options for you to choose from. Feel free to choose any of the backgrounds that you see here. For this tutorial, we're just going to find and click on the one by WooTip here. And then once you've done that, simply click on the download button to get it and then extract the files on your computer. Once we've done that, let's open up Adobe After Effects and get started. All right, so now that we're inside Adobe After Effects, let's start by first creating a new composition. We're going to name this Main Comp and we're going to choose the HD TV preset 1080, like so, which is a width of 1920 by 1080 pixels. Then we're going to choose the duration of the video. So this is usually determined by how long your audio track is, but we don't know how long that is at the moment. So let's go ahead and change this to one minute for now, just for this example. And then we can always change it back to something else later on. So go ahead and click OK. Next, we want to go ahead and import our assets, such as the different backgrounds and the audio track. So to do this, let's go ahead and go to File, Import, and then select File. Then select the backgrounds and the audio track that you want to use, and then click on Import to add them in. Once you've done that, they'll appear here in the project panel. And to add them to the composition, all we have to do is simply choose which background that we want to use. So for this example, we'll choose number seven, click and drag it down to the main comp like so. Excellent. Now you'll see straight away our background is being shown in the preview panel here. And we want to go ahead and combine some of these uh, backgrounds here just to make it look a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and choose number one place that on top. We'll choose a, another number one, place that one on top. And lastly, we'll choose a, a number three and place that on top here. And the way that we're going to blend these backgrounds together is by using one of these blending modes here, which are located to the right of our layers here. So let's go ahead and choose an overlay for number three. And we're just going to go ahead and go down to the transform options here and choose an opacity of 
And then for the next layer here, we're going to choose an overlay as well. And then again, just going down into the transform options and change the opacity to 50%. And then for this last layer here, number one, we'll choose a multiply just to make our background a little bit more interesting and a little bit darker. Excellent. Now this will provide a good contrast for our waves animation. Now, once we've done that, let's go ahead and create an adjustment layer by going to layer, new and adjustment layer. And then we want to place this adjustment layer all the way at the top of our layer stack here. So make sure you've done that. And then we're going to go ahead and choose in the effect and presets panel here, hue and saturation. So here we're going to choose that and then make sure that the adjustment layer is selected and then just simply double click on that and that will apply the hue and saturation effect to our layer. So let's go to the effect controls panel here where we can play about with things like the master hue to change the color of the background as you can see on our screen here. Now for this example, we'll go with a value of 12 degrees and we'll also change the master saturation to something like minus 40 percent minus 43 like so cool so now that we have the background ready let's learn how to create the different audio react animations so in this lesson we'll learn about the four display options that we'll use for the audio visualizer animation. We'll start off by going to the project panel again, and we're going to add our audio file here by clicking and then dragging it into the main comp like so. Then we want to go ahead and add a new solid to put our waveforms onto by going to layer, new and solid. Now it doesn't really matter what color we'll be using for the solid as we're going to put the waveform animations onto it. So just go ahead and click OK. And then we want to click and drag the solid to the top of our layer stack like so. And then go to Effect, Generate. And then you'll notice that we have two different audio animation effects that we can choose from. Audio Spectrum and Audio Waveform. Now, Audio Spectrum, which is what we're going to use, is going to give us that digital graph sort of look, whereas Audio Waveform creates the more zigzaggy look. So for this tutorial, we'll mainly be focusing on Audio Spectrum, but feel free to play around with Audio Waveform afterwards, as they have very similar properties to play around with. So let's click on Audio Spectrum. Now, the first thing that you'll notice when we add the effect to the layer is that there's no movement being displayed on the line here. And that's because we haven't linked our audio layer onto it. So let's go to the effect control panel. And first, we're going to go ahead and add our audio track to this by going to the audio layer and then selecting our audio track here from the drop down box like so. And then straight away you should see that there's some animations being added to the line here as we scrub back and forth on our timeline like so. However, the default settings are pretty basic. So let's go ahead and adjust some of the settings here so that we can stylize and customize the look of our animation. So the start and end points here are basically the start and end positions of this line, which means if we play about with this value here, you can see that it's moving the starting position and it's moving the end position like so. You can also choose to move the line, the start and end points by using the selection tool here. And then just sort of clicking on the start point, clicking and dragging it around the composition like so. So we can do that if you prefer. Next, we have this 
path option here. Now this allows us to align our animation to a specific path that we create. So for example, if we were to use the pen tool here and we were going to draw a path like this, if we then go ahead and choose the path, you can see that by selecting it, the waveform is now on the custom path that I just made, which can be incredibly useful for more complex designs. So next, we have this use polar path option here. So if we go ahead and select that, this sort of warps and squishes everything to the start point, which can be quite interesting, especially if we go ahead and increase the maximum height here, you can get some really cool effects with that. However, for this tutorial, we want to keep things looking quite simple. So let's go ahead and unselect this and check out what other options we have here. So the starting frequency and the ending frequency is going to consider what sort of sound range in the audio track will be displayed. So depending on the audio track, you want to play around with the values here to catch the nicest amount of waveforms in between. So for this example, we're going to use a start frequency of one and an end frequency of 700. Now this can be a good way to vary the look of each of your waveform animations if you don't want them all to look and animate in the same way. Next, we have the frequency bands. Now this number represents the amount of lines here that we'll be using for the animation. So if we go ahead and reduce these, you'll see that we have less lines. And if we go ahead and increase these, you'll see that we have more lines. Now, a cool trick here is if we increase the value to a really high amount, we get so many lines here that they sort of merge together and we get this sort of cool solid wave that we can use for our animation. But for now, let's go ahead and choose a value of 50 so that we get 50 of these bands for our animation. Next is the maximum height. Now this allows our waveform lines to react even more to our audio, giving it a more animated look. So you can see right now with the default value, the lines really aren't moving that much as we scrub back and forth on our timeline. However, if we go ahead and crank up the maximum height, you can see that our wave now becomes a lot more animated and visible. So for now, let's go ahead and choose a height of 300. Next, we have the audio duration and audio offset. We don't really touch these too much, but basically the higher the audio duration is, the greater the waveform movement will appear. So let's go ahead and keep this at 90. Now for the audio offset, this will give you a delay between the animation and the audio track, which is not something that we want. So we'll leave that alone at zero. Next, we have thickness. Now thickness is how thick you want these bars to be. So let's go ahead and increase the thickness to about 10 so that they are more visible for our animation. Next is the softness, which sort of blurs out the edges of the bar and makes them glow. We'll keep this at about 12%. And then next here we have the colors. Here we can play around with the colors that we want to use for our waveform. For now, let's go ahead and keep things simple. So for both of these, we're going to choose a color of FFD 200 and the same for the outside color FFD 200. Now for the hue interpolation, 
This is how we can create cool looking gradients to our animation. So you can see as I move the circle around, we can get more and more colors added to our bar. Now, if we turn the wheel one full rotation at 360 degrees, you'll see that we get the entire color spectrum. And if we continue to turn, you'll get the repeat of that effect over and over and over again. So let's pull this right back and we just want to use a value of 90 degrees here just to keep things looking a little bit subtle. Next, we have the dynamic hue phase. Now for this, this means that the colors will react to the audio as well. Next, we also have the color symmetry, which means that the colors will be symmetrical from the middle. Now, if this is turned off, you'll just get a color gradient, which appears more from the left and the right, like so. And now finally, we have the display options here. Now here we have three main options to choose from. Analog lines, which appears as a more zigzaggy effect. We also have analog dots, like so, which makes our waveform appear more like these cool dots which bounce up and down according to the audio track. And then back to digital, which is our lines, which is back to the graph look that we have. Now for the side options here, we can choose from side A, side B, and side A and B. Now side A basically means that we are just displaying the top side, like so, whereas side B is displaying the bottom side. Now if we go back to side A and B, we'll have both the top and the bottom being displayed in our animation. Now for this example, we're going to choose just side A for now. Excellent. So now that we're familiar with the different options that we have available to customize the look of our waveform, let's go ahead and make the different waveforms that we want to use for our animation. Now I'll show you exactly how I created each of the waveform designs. We'll take this waveform here and we want to change the start and endpoint values to 770 by 580 and the endpoint here to 1850 by 580. Just to move this over to the right here. Then we're going to change and rename our dark gray solid layer to Spectrum 01 like so. Select this and we're going to duplicate it by pressing Control D on the keyboard, which should automatically rename this to Spectrum 02. And then we want to change the following. So let's go ahead and change the start and endpoint values of 580 to 595. And the same for the endpoint, 595. And then we want to change the end frequency here to 200 and the frequency bands to 100 with a max height of 200. We want to change the thickness here to 5 and for the inside color we want to keep that at FD, FFD 200 but for the outside color we want to change this to FF3 296 then click OK and then we're going to make sure that color symmetry is unchecked. We want to change the display option here from digital to analog lines and we want to change it from side A to side B. So now you'll see that we've got this nice little design here. Next we want to duplicate this layer again so press Control D on the keyboard, which should create Spectrum 03. And then we want to change the start and endpoints here from 595 to 7, 
two five and the same for the endpoint seven two five and then we want to change the end frequency here to 800 and the frequency bands to 70 with a max height of 400 and a thickness of 7. Both the outside and inside colors here, we want to change this to pure white, like so. And then we want to change the display option to analog dots. And then we're going to keep the side option to side B. Next, we're going to duplicate this again, pressing Control D on the keyboard for Spectrum 4. And then we're going to change the start and endpoint values from 725 to 460, like so. Make sure that's 460. And then from here, we're just going to change the end frequency from 800 to 500. And then we're going to change the side option to side A, like so. Awesome. Now that we have the main waves, let's go ahead and make the waves for the top and the bottom to frame our composition. So let's duplicate Spectrum 4. And this time we want to rename this wave top. And we're going to change the start point to 90 by 60 and the end point to 1850 by 60, like so. Now the start frequency, we're going to change this to 20 and the end frequency to 900. The frequency bands, we're going to change this to 1000. And the maximum height, we're going to change this to 200 with an audio duration of 90 and a thickness of 10. The color will remain white and we want to change the display option to digital Make sure this is side B. And then we want to go down here and change the opacity here to 30%, like so. Next, we're going to duplicate this. And this time, we're going to rename this wave bottom. And we're going to change the start point and end point values here to 90, 1000, and the end point to 1000 here as well, just to bring it all down to the bottom. And we want the start frequency to be 70, and the end frequency to be 700. And this is to make it so that the waveforms here at the top and the bottom will be different looking. And then we're going to change this to side A. Awesome. And that's all the line spectrums that we'll be using for this composition. Next, we'll be creating the circular audio wave, which will fit into the space on the left here. To create the circular waveform, let's go ahead and duplicate our Spectrum 01 layer and then rename this to Circle 01. And then from here, we want to go to the Effects and Presets panel and type in Polar Coordinates. And then once you've found that, double click on that to add it to our layer. Make sure that the type of conversion is set to React to Polar and the interpolation is set to 100%. And now if we go back to our audio spectrum options at the top here, we can just go ahead and adjust the start and end points so that they join up the circle together to make one full circle. So let's go ahead and make the values for the start point 10, 540, and the end point 1982 by 540 
like so. And you can see here now we've got one full circle. Let's go ahead and make some further adjustments to make our circle look even nicer. So the start frequency here, we're going to change this to 10. The end frequency to 500. And then the frequency bands here, we're going to change this to 73. And the max height of 600 and an audio duration of 150. Change the thickness to 12 and the softness stays at 12%. And then for the inside color, we want to keep this at FFD 200. And the outside color, we want to change this to FF3296, like so. And then for the side options, we want to choose both side A and B. Great. So now that we've got our circular waveform, I'm just going to go ahead and hide the rest of our waves just so that we can concentrate fully on our circle and we've got no distractions. The next thing we want to do is we're going to create another smaller circle by duplicating our circle 01 layer. And then we're going to go down to the transform properties here. And let's go ahead and change the scale to 35%, like so. And then on the effects control panel, let's go ahead and change the following. So the start frequency, we're going to change this to 2. The end frequency to 300. The max height, we'll change that to 300. And the thickness to 15 and let's change both colors to white like so and then we're going to change the display option from digital to analog lines like so and now to finish things off let's go ahead and create the play button so first let's make sure that we don't have anything selected so let's go ahead and click on the gray space here to make sure that none of the layers are selected. And then we want to go ahead and click on the shape tool, click and hold, and then select the ellipse tool here, like so. Make sure that we don't have any fill selected. So click on the fill word here, and then make sure that we have no fill option. And then the stroke is selected. We want a pure white stroke with a width of about eight pixels. And then by holding the shift key and then clicking on dragging with your mouse, we can create a perfect circle like so. So once you've done that, let's go ahead and use the selection tool here and then click and drag this circle into place like that. And then we can even go to the transform options here and then just sort of scale it down a little bit like that, just so that we've got the shape that we want. Next, let's create the play symbol. So again, deselecting any layers that we have selected. And then we want to go ahead and choose the polygon tool. So click and hold the shapes tool here. And then we want to select the polygon tool like so. And then whilst creating this shape, we want to use the arrow keys on our keyboard to press up or down to increase or decrease the amount of sides that our shape has. So do that until we have this triangle. And then again, if you want a perfectly aligned triangle, just press and hold the shift key on your keyboard like so. And then once you've created this, let's go ahead and remove the stroke. And we want to create a fill here. So let's click on the fill word, make sure that our fill is set to solid color, and then make sure that our fill color is set to white like that. Awesome. 
Now let's go to the transform options and we want to rotate this by 90 degrees like so. And then using the selection tool here, let's go ahead and move this into position and then scale this right down like that until we've got this into position into the right position for our play button. So if you find it hard to select the play button shape here, we can then use the position values here, like so, until you've got the right position. So now let's go ahead and bring back our wave designs like that and we're going to select our circle designs and our shape layers and then we're going to right click pre-compose and let's name this circle wave like so and then we're just going to go ahead and move the position of our circle design over to the left like so cool now all we need to do is click on the play preview button to see what our animation looks like there we have it all the different types of audio react animations that you can create for your podcast or video Next, let's take a look at how we can create a different camera angle to make things look just a little bit more interesting. To do this, we need to create a new composition. So go to Composition, New Composition, and let's call this Angle 01. And then keep the rest of the settings the same as the previous composition. Click OK. And then from the project panel here, we want to go ahead and grab our initial composition, which is the main comp, and then drag it into our new angle 01 comp. Awesome. Now we want to make this main comp layer into a 3D layer by clicking on the cube icon here. And this makes it so that it can be affected by the camera. From there, we want to create a new camera by going to layer, new, camera. For the camera settings we want to make sure that the type is set to two node camera and that the film size is 36 millimeters. We want the zoom to be 1199.44 millimeters and then we want the focal length here to be 63.75 millimeters and the angle of view to be 31.53 degrees. Once you've done all of those settings, go ahead and click OK. And now let's go ahead and twirl down the camera transform settings here. And then we want to go ahead and change the following. So the point of interest here, we want to change it to 813 by 461 by 139 and then we want to change the position here to minus 190 by 1255 by minus 1060 and then for the rotation we want to set the Z rotation here to 25 degrees great now let's go ahead and twirl down the camera options here and we want to set the zoom to 3 400. The foc focus distance here we want to set this to 1850. The aperture here we want to change this to 1 to 5. And then the blur level here we want to change this to 200%. The iris shape here, we want to change this to a 
fast rectangle. And then for the iris aspect ratio, we want to change this to one. Awesome. Now that we have our camera angle, let's make some final adjustments. Create a new adjustment layer by going to layer, new adjustment layer. And then let's rename this optics compensation. Then go to the effects and presets panel here. And then we want to go ahead and type in optics compensation and then add it to the layer. Then go to the effect controls panel here and we want to change the following. Change the field of view to 50. Check reverse lens distortion. And then the field of view orientation, we want to keep this at horizontal. And then for the view center here, we want to change the values to 8, 12 by 5, 6, 6. And then make sure that resize is set at off. Now let's go ahead and add some blur to this. First, create a new composition and rename this blur mask. And we want to create a width of 3840 by 2160. Click OK. And now we want to create a base black solid by going to layer, new solid. Make sure that the color is set to pure black like so. Then click OK. Duplicate this layer. And then we want to go to the effects and presets panel and type in gradient ramp. Double click on that to add it to our solid. And then over here, we're going to go to the effects control panel and we're going to change a few of the settings. So let's go to the start ramp here and change this to 2112 by 1236. The start color, make sure it's set to pure black. And then for the end ramp here, we're going to change this to 1104 by 2516. And the end color set to pure white, like so. Excellent. Now go back to the layer here and change the mode to screen. Let's duplicate that layer. And then we're going to change the settings here from the start ramp to 2176 by 1124. And the end ramp here to 2984 by 172, like so. Excellent. Now let's go back to the angle comp. And we want to add our blur mask layer in. So let's go ahead and drag this in underneath our camera layer. So let's collapse our camera layer here. And then we're, go we're just going to go ahead and hide our blur mask by clicking on the eye icon like so. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. And then for this adjustment layer, we're going to rename this lens blur. Go to the effects and presets panel here and we're going to type in camera lens blur and then we're going to double click on that to add it to our lens blur, blur layer. Awesome. Now let's go to this effects control panel and we're going to change the following. So for the blur radius here we're going to change this to 20 and then for the iris properties here, let's change the shape to hexagon, the roundness to 0%, the aspect ratio, make sure it's set to 1, and the diffraction fringe here, we want to make sure that's set to 100. Now for the blur map, this is where we can select our blur mask layer, so make sure that it's here and select that and then you can see straight away that has changed the look of our composition. Awesome. Now 
For the channel, make sure that it's set to luminance. And for the placement, make sure that's set to center map. And then under the highlight options here, make sure the gain is set to zero. The threshold is set to 26214. The saturation is set to zero. And the edge behavior is unchecked with the use linear working spa checked. Once you're done, go ahead and hit the play button to see what it looks like. So that's it for this video. Feel free to repeat and experiment with the different techniques, options and effects that we've gone through over the course to come up with your own waveform designs for your podcasts or video projects. If you liked this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of any new and inspiring videos. If you're looking to learn even more, check out some of the other tutorials in the channel. Have fun and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.